In this video we're going to show you a couple of tricks and tips that you can use to help save time when using the viral virtual machine. This demonstration we're going to be using VMware Fusion and also VMware ESXi but the methods used when we're talking about Fusion are equally applicable to VMware Workstation whether that be the Windows version or the Linux version. Starting off with a fresh deployment of the viral virtual machine version VV204 and I've installed that on Fusion and I'm now going to start that virtual machine up. The virtual machine booted up, I'm now logging in and I want to get the IP address of my virtual machine. Now this is deployed on Fusion so we have DHCP enabled so I don't need to do any uh, static IP configuration here. Now I'm going to use my web browser pointed at the IP address of the virtual machine to access the user workspace management page. Once I'm logging in, what I'm going to be taking a look at is the SALT key, the SALT status tab. So here we can see that this system is unlicensed. So I'm going to be resetting my key. I'm entering my string, setting an email address, and also the salt masters to which I'm going to be talking to and then also entering the complete private RSA key data into that field so we're going to remove what's there put in the new key and then hit reset so the resets completed now and we just press the check status and here we can see we've got successful connection we can see the licensed the node count is there and we have seven days. So this is good. We are licensed at this point. Okay, so now we're actually going to shut the virtual machine down. We are done. We've licensed the system and this is now good to use. So this image is now going to form our baseline installation. So I'm actually going to sit there and going to rename it. Just mark it as baseline just so I know what this is. And this is the system that I'm now going to be using to create clones. So we have a choice. We can either to create a full clone or a linked clone. Whereas a full clone is a complete copy of the base disk, a linked clone just gives us the incremental changes against the base disk and is smaller and more lightweight in terms of the amount of disk space used. We'll also take a look at snapshots a little later on in this video. Now we're going to create a linked clone, give it a name, and save it and then start the system up. So we've started up our clone, logging in, and we're just checking the IP address that's going to come up. And then I'm going to take my web browser and point it to the IP address of that virtual machine. So I'm going into the user workspace management page, logging in as normal, and we want to check the salt status of this system. So we're clicking on the salt status page, and here we can see it is licensed, and we're checking the status. And we got a valid return, so that system is all good. make some changes to my clone. I'm going to add a couple of new projects. So I'm going in add and just going to set up a new project. So test one, set the password, save it. And let's add another one, we'll call this test two. And again, save the changes. key thing to remember about these changes is that these are being made against our clone. So I'm now going to shut my clone down and then destroy it because I can just clone a new instance straight off my baseline disk, bring that back up and I'm back to an operational state immediately. So there we go, we're going to delete it, done, clone again and I'm back to the beginning again ready with a fresh system to deploy.
I'm going to take a look at snapshots, which can be used in conjunction with clones. They are not mutually exclusive. So here I've got my clone. I'm now going to snapshot it to create a baseline. So this is just literally a freeze, frozen capture of the state. So just call it baseline and say take. All right, now I can start my system up. Off we go. Now my VM's up, logging in as usual. And again, I want to get the IP address of the system. And we're going to point my web browser at that IP address and go into the user workspace management page. So when we take a look at the projects tab, because we had rolled back to our original baseline, obviously the projects that we created are, are gone. So test one, test two don't exist. So I'm going to just recreate that. There we go, so test one is created. And now I'm going to create a snapshot of that. So now I'm going to go back in and add that second user, test two. Remember, this is after that snapshot's been taken. So there it is, test two. And setting the password. And we're saved. And there we have test one, test two. Taking a snapshot, I can roll back to that previous state by selecting the snapshot. And say deploy to it. So do I want to save my current state? Like, no, don't care about that. I just want to roll back. Now this does take a bit of time, so I've speeded this piece up. Okay, and then it's restoring state. And now that system is up. And if we go back in, just checking the IP address. There it is. Now if we refresh and log in again as UWM, test two is gone because we have rolled back in state. So we're back to test one. Remember is the snapshots and the cloning apply to any situation, not just to adding projects. So you can use this once you've got up a simulation, tear it down, destroy it, and start over with a fresh system if you wish. We're taking a look at the ESXi vSphere interface. Now vSphere offers us the ability to do snapshots, but not to do clones. Clones is actually a function of the vCenter interface. So I've got a fresh OVA that's deployed, and I'm just gonna take a snapshot of that. So this is fresh, it hasn't been registered yet. So I'm just gonna call this baseline. And the snapshot's done. And now we're going to start up. So with our snapshotted system uh, booted, we're then, just as we've seen before on, on Fusion, we can then make appropriate changes, whether that's registering the sort key, whether that's adding new projects, disk images, you know, whatever it is that we want to do. And again, we just take the snapshot, it then sits there, and if we want to roll back, it's just the case of choosing the previous snapshot, getting us back to that baseline, getting us back to that fresh image. So that then gives us that ability to roll back once we've made those changes, just as we saw before when we were taking a look at this via Fusion. So I hope this gives you a sense as to some of the possibilities that you can use just from the point of view of saving time, saving hassle, and avoiding the need to redeploy your OVA image.